I really want to emulate you. I don't know. But all your emulators kind of suck. Hello my friends and welcome to another video where this time we are covering Dreamcast emulation and my goodness Dreamcast does not have very good emulators like they work they're fine but none of them are exceptionally accurate each one has its own share of problems um, pluses pros and cons and today you know what we're just gonna dig into all of them so let's get started First up, we're going to do Rycast as part of RetroArch. If you haven't got RetroArch set up, check out my PS1 tutorial. It'll show you how to do all that. So first thing we're going to do, go down to Core Updater, and we are going to scroll all the way down to the Sega section right here. And we're going to download Rycast. So just uh, go ahead and click on that. It's downloaded. And after that, we're going to get the course set up to be used. So quit out of RetroArch. Go to the RetroArch website. Click on Docs and go to for users, go down to um, core documentation, Sega cores, and click on Sega Dreamcast or iCast. This tells us what files we need and how they need to be named. So very important stuff right here. I'm not gonna provide links to these files or tell you how to get them. Just know that Google is your friend. So first uh, go to your retro system folder, create a folder named Dream, I mean DC for Dreamcast obviously. And then once you have the files you need, we are going to go ahead and put them in this folder. And that's basically it. You are ready to you're ready to start playing Dreamcast games. So go ahead and um, navigate RetroArch over to your uh, your Dreamcast folder where you have your games stored, and uh, tell it to load one up. I will take this moment to tell you all that Ridecast is actually a fairly new emulator for PC, so. It does have a lot of graphical glitches and issues, so it's not really the best choice. It was just uh, the first one I happened to tackle for this video, and honestly, I don't recommend actually using this, but I do want you all to see how to get it set up for when in the future it does get a lot better. As you can see in my video here, um, the flags in Army and Sarge's Heroes are missing, uh, the buildings have lots of flickering and graphical issues, the game itself runs, and it runs really well, but uh, these uh, graphical issues really break this. One of the key advantages to Rycast is that it does have the full uh, emulator suite of higher textures. You're able to choose what type of video cable you're using so you can have your game set to run uh, in 480p versus 480i. Um, you can set like RGB and all that. Um, it also has overclocking the Dreamcast CPU so you can get a little bit better speeds in games that would get frame rate dips. So it's it's going to be a really good emulator. Like it can run some things really well. Like Episode One Racer runs pretty dang good. It is missing fog effects and lens effects, but I have not seen the lens effects work in any Dreamcast emulator yet. So it's not a bad way to play some Dreamcast games at this point. But there are better alternatives. Now, RetroArch does include a second Dreamcast core called ReDream, and this is actually um, their port of the ReDream Dreamcast emulator um, back when it was still open source. So you go ahead and uh, try that out as well if you'd like. You can go back to the documentation and you can see how to get this core set up. So you just go over to ReDream and it'll show you what you need to have those BIOS files named as. So just go ahead and scroll down. And you can see that these ones need to be named slightly different than they did on Rycast. So uh, this one's actually pretty easy because you already have these files. So just go ahead and navigate over to your RetroArch system folder and uh, just basically copy paste them. Like select uh, both those files and copy paste and um, rename them to what ReDream is looking for. And you're good to go and test out ReDream. Now, like Rycast, ReDream is a very new core to RetroArch, and it is even worse than Rycast, honestly. Um, more graphical issues and, honestly, sound issues. So once again, I don't really recommend using this core, and I doubt that this core is actually going to see much in the way of improvements due to the fact that uh, the source code became closed um, due to ReDream proper.
Moving on to Redream proper itself, this is the newest Dreamcast emulator to break onto the scene, and honestly, it is my favorite to use. Unfortunately, the developer did make it closed source and locked uh, higher internal resolutions behind a paywall. Um, and also to even download it, you do have to register for their site, which is a bit annoying, but honestly, once you are able to actually get Redream, it is a pretty solid emulator. It requires virtually no setup, like you don't need to find a BIOS file because they wrote their own high-level version. So when, once you're on their site, um, I always recommend downloading the latest development versions because they usually have bug fixes and new features that just are not usually in stable versions, so I always recommend getting the development versions. And once you get it downloaded, just get it extracted. I'm just leaving everything on my desktop right now for simplicity, so go ahead, open it up, launch it, and guess what? You're, you're basically ready to go. It's just going to tell you to search for where your games are stored, so just go ahead and click on library, add, uh, add a directory, scroll to where your games are stored, and... Once you're done with that, they are all just going to go ahead and, uh, and pop up. The nice thing about Redream is it does have this wonderful user interface, and it just shows you all the games that you have. It's very easy to navigate, it shows you all of your graphic controller options. It automatically detects your controller inputs, so that way you don't have to even set that up. Um, but overall, very, very, very easy to use. Just double click on your game, you get loaded up. And as you can see, it doesn't have the graphical issues that we experienced on Rycast. The flags are showing up, no, no building flickers, but that's not to say that it is a perfect experience. Um, they claim about 80% game compatibility, but there are numerous graphical effects that are still missing. Another cool thing is you can actually go back to the menu from gameplay by pushing your home button and instantly load into other games. So um, you don't have to worry about shutting down a previous game to load into another one, which is really, really nice. Like it's very, very streamlined uh, experience. And I, I really like streamlined experiences. I like them. I'm lazy. I like, I like being able to do things all from my controller. It's, it's wonderful. It's very wonderful. Essentially, if you want the easiest Dreamcast emulator available today, it's definitely going to be Redream. It's it's very easy. It's not perfect, but it works, and it works for so many different things. Like, it doesn't have perfect graphics, as you can see here in Tony Hawk. The timer is messed up. Menu items are messed up, but gameplay and shadows and everything are working great. 2D games like Marvel vs. Capcom work great. Like, this is really one of the best choices right now in terms of Dreamcast emulation. The next Dreamcast emulator we're going to look at is Null DC, and this one, honestly, I don't use it anymore. It's, um, I want to show you how to get it set up just for, um, historical purposes, honestly. So, download it, get it extracted, and... Yeah, I don't, I don't really use this one anymore, guys, just because it doesn't... It doesn't, it just doesn't work as well as the others do now. Um, it hasn't been updated in almost six years, seven years. And it's just, it. other emulators have the same functionality that it does. So uh, to get uh, null DC set up, we do need those DC flash and uh, boot files that we have in RetroArch. So just go ahead and copy them over into uh, this folder here and you're good to go on null DC. So. One of the coolest things about Null DC is that it does have the VMUs on screen. That's um, about the only functionality that it has over some of the other Dreamcast emulators. Uh, Demule also has this functionality, so even that, it's not really useful. But as you can see, it does run better than Rycast. Um, we don't have any of the glitches or shimmering in Army Mints are just heroes. Um, but I wasn't able to get my controller set up in the last build of Null DC for some reason, so I didn't look too hard into it because, again, I really don't use this because other emulators have much better functionality. Alright, moving on to the last Dreamcast emulator we're going to cover today, we are looking at Demule, and this is, in my opinion, 
the current standard bearer for Dreamcast emulators. Very good compatibility, good functionality, lots of extra features, including the ability to do broadband adapters for online play. I've played Fantasy Star Online on some Dreamcast private servers, and it's worked fantastic. So uh, the problem with uh, Demule is that it is a freaking pain in the butt to get set up. Instead of using the, uh, the boot files and uh, BIOS file that we've already been using up to this point, it needs very specific ROM files. So when you first try to load up uh, Demule, it's going to have you set your plugins and directories. So create a new folder, call it ROMs. This is where we're going to put all of the required files we need to run Demule. And again, I'm not going to link those files to you guys because it's not legal. So uh, once again, Google's going to be your friend here. But all these files stay in a zip folder. So once you find them, just uh, put those zip files directly into this folder and you're good to go. So uh, the great thing about Demule is that it does have most of the effects that the other emulators are missing. We have fog effects in Episode 1 Racer, but there are graphical effects in other games like with Sarge's Heroes. Um, we're getting massive uh, interlacing and screen tearing for no reason. It's, uh, it's kind of weird, but again, no Dreamcast emulator is perfect. And because of this, if you are planning to use Dreamcast uh, emulation, I do recommend getting a front end of some sort that can let you select which emulator each game is going to use because it's just going to save you a big headache of needing to know what game runs with what emulator all the time because if you just want to be able to play your Dreamcast games, like you don't want to have to remember which emulator it works in. You just want to get it set up once and then just click on the game and just be good to go. So uh, highly recommend a front end. And there you have it. That is how you get Dreamcast emulators set up to play your favorite Dreamcast games. And honestly, if you are just wanting to play the few games that the system has to offer, Redream is going to be more than like more than enough for your needs. But if you really want to go all out and try to get the best possible Dreamcast experience you can get, I honestly recommend getting a dual setup between Redream and Demule with a front end to switch back and forth between them depending on the game. That is truly what is going to give you the best experience here. Um, in my own personal setup, I use Redream, Demule, and Rycast. Um, Rycast mostly for experimentation, but there are a few games that runs really well. So, um, but again, that's uh, that's just my take. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it showed you um, a little bit of insight into the world of Dreamcast emulation. It's kind of sad that Dreamcast emulation is still kind of stuck in emulation dark ages. Like, it's not. It's not seeing the advances that other emulation scenes have seen, especially things like GameCube, uh, PS2, um, even uh, even Sega Saturn right now is getting kind of a emulation renaissance. Like it's 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 interesting stuff. Like um, so, hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. It is truly awesome that uh, that you guys support the channel so well. It's uh, it's fantastic. So thank you all once again. Have wonderful days. And as always, if you haven't already, hit that sub button, like, dislike button, depending on how much you like the video. And we will see you all back next time.